Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? Comet Pan Stars! First naked eye comet since Hale Bop in 1997 for the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> However, there's a problem. It's really low on the horizon and maybe hard to spot. Find a low, flat, western horizon if possible, but rather than give you a single graphic showing where the comet is on various days, let's show you where the comet is relative to the sun every day so you can measure where to find it off the horizon. Check my Stargazing Basics 2 video to learn how to easily measure distance in the sky. Now, these graphics show no ground, so you see the placement of the sun relative to the horizon and where the comet is. When going to observe, Look for the glow where the sun has set. It will be strongest right where the sun is. So measure from there, either south or north to the comet, and then measure up from the horizon to help you find pan stars. For example, on Monday, the comet is still low at 30 minutes past sunset, which for a couple of weeks will be the sweet spot timing wise between comet visibility and elevation above the horizon. And the comet is eight degrees south from the sun and eight degrees above the horizon that day. So a little less than a fist width over and up. On the 12th, the very young and slim crescent moon will be nearby to the comet. On the 13th, the moon will be slightly larger than the crescent, but up above the comet about 10 degrees. Use the glow of the sunset and the moon to help you locate the comet this night as pan stars is between the two objects. By the 15th, the comet has moved directly over the sun's glow, and by the end of the weekend, will have risen slightly above 10 degrees at that 30 minutes past sunset time, giving you a, a couple more minutes to try and view it as the twilight fades. For your observing convenience, I will post all these daily graphics at eyesonthesky.com. And now this week's dark sky fact. Want to do something about light pollution but aren't sure how to get started? The International Dark Sky Association has a sample letter you can send to neighbors and tips on talking to them. Follow these guides and start working to reduce light pollution in your neighborhood, starting this week as you share views of pan stars. The comet moves northward through the latter half of March. Up until this point, we have mostly been viewing the comet at the end of civil twilight, when the sun is about 6 degrees below the horizon. At the end of March, though, we can push our view into early nautical twilight, which is the sun's position at 6 to 12 degrees below the horizon. Interestingly, the comet swings past the Andromeda galaxy, Messier 31, in early April, even though its magnitude has faded significantly. But helpfully, pan stars will be 10 degrees above the horizon at the start of astronomical twilight on the April 5th, which is when the sun is 12 to 18 degrees below the horizon. So we have several weeks of being able to watch pan stars move in the western sky, so don't be too disappointed if you can't see it naked eye when it's at its brightest. And here's an observing tip. Binoculars are likely the best tool to scan the horizon for the comet. Just be sure not to mistake a jet contrail for pan stars. If a comet moves anywhere except towards the horizon, it's probably a contrail. And if you use a telescope, be sure to use a long focal length eyepiece to give you the widest field of view. Jupiter begins to gain some distance away from the Hyades, and don't miss the sight of Aldebaran, Jupiter, and the Moon on the evening of the 17th, all within 5 degrees of each other. Saturn clears the horizon by 11 p.m., well placed by 12.30 or so, not far from the second magnitude stars, Zubinel Shamali and Zubinel Janubi. That's all for this week. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller, wishing you clear and dark skies.